Okay, so I'm back and as you can see I've finished the pipework for the return. That's the top one of those 250 mils. Notice there's the um, anti-siphon valve fitted there and that's pointing into the coil. Sorry, this is the flow, not the return. Um, pointing into the coil because the water is going to go in at the top and out the bottom. And what we don't want to happen is when the cylinder's hot and the panel's cold, we don't want the uh, hot water basically convecting up the pipe and going back up to the top. So I've run that flow so it finishes basically level with the uh, return so they're both kind of in the same place. And then what I've done here is I've run my twin sole. So this twin sole uh, is from Navatron. They sell it kind of ready made by the, by the meter. And it's, um, you see from the bottom, it's corrugated stainless steel. But unlike things like flu liners and stuff, uh, these corrugations aren't spiral shaped. Um, and what that means is to uh, terminate it, we crimp on this little washer at the end. So it starts as a kind of three section piece of metal. We bend that round one of the rings and because it's not a spiral, that sits in quite nicely. Don't forget to put the cap on before you put the washer on. Um, and then that will connect on with a fiber washer, which I've got somewhere here. Um, whoop. Where, wherever it's gone on the top of there. Uh, yeah, you can see the uh, fiber washers in here. So one of those will go in the bottom of that um, and that's basically the connection so there's obviously going to be one for each side the other thing about the twin sole is it um, has this sensor cable fitted inside one of the pipe insulations running the whole length of this so again it just saves a bit of wiring saves a bit of hassle so what i'm going to do is i'm going to terminate those two pipes um, and i'm going to join them down to the flow and the return and once that's done, I'm going to then clip on these pipes using some of those same 40 mil waste pipe clips, clip some up through the loft, um, and then I'll be ready to start thinking about fitting the panel itself. So if we uh, ignore all the mess up here, under the eaves here is where the pipes come up from the airing cupboard. So you can see here where I have used those waste pipe clips just to clip the pipes onto a purlin. Obviously got to kind of do the best you can do in the conditions. This stuff doesn't turn on a sixpence if you like, but I've put another couple of clips on here. That gray is um, just where the pipes have been separated. So you can see that. So that's just the join. So nothing particularly worrying there. And then up here, all I've done is I've come in from the panel, so here and over there, just come in with a couple of bits of 22 mil with a compression elbow at the end. And obviously that's just so I can change direction in to get into these pipes, but you won't don't necessarily have to have an elbow if you've got a slightly different setup. And again, like I've done in most places, I've covered all those bits of copper with some of the high temperature insulation. In terms of coming through the felt, um, you can see there that I, it's a pretty rough hole that I've made in the felt. But because of the flashing um, above the pipes, the flashing has a kind of a rubber collar around the pipe and that stops uh, any kind of liquid leaking in. Certainly haven't seen anything leaking in here. Uh, and the other thing worth noting is this little box here, which is actually a, a kind of a lightning protector I don't particularly expect my panel to be hit by lightning. I've got other high buildings close to my house, but just in case that's just got some fuses in there that get blown up if lightning strikes it and it stops the electricity going down this brown wire inside um, the twin sole. On the other side is basically the same, but without the, um, without the sensor wiring because that's at this end. So again, not really anything massively interesting in the loft. And here you can see what these straps look like. It always looks really pretty when the professionals put it in, but effectively you've got to try and just find a space where that's going to come in from your, um, your panel frame and then bend it around some of the joists and screw it in a couple of places just to hold it um, in place. 
So that's all there really is um, up in the loft. Nothing too much to see. Um, some pipe clips. Obviously, you're, in your case, if you've got um, plasterboard up and stuff like that, then you might have a bit more fun trying to get this stuff up. But in many cases, using this twin sole flexible stuff obviously makes my life a lot easier. If I was doing this in copper, then there'd be lots of bends, lots of fittings, lots of messing around. So this is kind of an example where you might want to spend another 50 quid just to make your life a lot easier. Um, I'm certainly pleased that I did. So here you can see I've got the panel on the roof at last. Um, because I've got a hipped end roof, as you can see, the ridge is quite small. So I couldn't use the roof ladder on the front for putting the tubes or manifold in, which was very annoying. But um, I ended up using ropes in the end. So it took a bit longer, um, but it's okay. The tubes are in. Um, and at the minute, it's a bright hot day and um, I'm getting about kind of 10 degrees per minute in temperature rise so um so it's all good so far i've obviously got to keep an eye on the pressure um, and recharge the system if necessary and um, again just keep an eye on the the pipe work and stuff like that make sure it's not leaking